We had a conversation earlier, and this conversation had my co-host, KMJ, all fired up because he said the African leaders are always claiming that the British has taken away our wealth. That's why we are suffering. However, it's not true because we've had our freedom for a very long time. Now, it seems that government upon government, every African country complains about it. It's speculated that some people actually do take our wealth when they are in government or when they are in power, do take the wealth to go invest other places. In some countries, they claim that they don't even have the foreign reserves at all because it goes into people's pockets. There is one man in Ghana here who feels he can change everything. He is an accountant, he's an entrepreneur, and he is a politician. He formed a party, that's the APC party, in the year 2012. He's been contesting ever since, and he says he will contest again in the year 2024. Can he change everything in Ghana for us? Well, we'll talk to him today. His name is Hassan Ayariga. Dr. Hassan Ayariga. Welcome. Thank you. Good How are you? Good morning. Not bad. Let me just make some correction. The party was formed in 2016. Oh, 2016 rather. Yes, okay. 2016. Okay. But I contested in 2012. Okay. Another ticket of the uh, PNC. Right. Yeah. Okay. So just that correction. Fantastic. Yeah. Welcome once again, I must say. Thank you, my dear. How okay. are you? Okay. I'm fine. Thank you. Now, you've contested for a while now. You contested 2012, did 2016, did 2020. All of them, you didn't emerge. 2012, 2020. 2012, 2016, you didn't contest? No, I didn't contest. Why didn't you contest? That, that was when they disqualified most of the political That's parties. That's so true. Very true. Yeah. Very, very true. But you contested 2020. 20, yeah. Now, talking about that, why are you coming back again in 2024? Now, I'm saying this because in 2020, you didn't even place third. Now, there were other parties that came and uh, they beat you to it. For a known phase, one would have thought that has, Dr. Hassan Ayariga should come and give the people there a run for their money. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. In 2024, you feel you can change everything? Yes, there's always a possibility of changing things when you persist and you continue to do the right thing and believe that you have what it takes to change the dynamics and the narratives. Um, over the years, we've seen the leadership of both the NDC and the MPP, but we are still complaining. <laughs> that means that they haven't done enough to change the narrative that we are asking for. One will say why Hassan Ayariga is contesting to become president. It's not because why. It's the reason is, the, there's so many reasons, it's not just why. There's so many reasons attached. Give us some of the reasons. Reasons are that. Like the young man who just left here, he's enumerated a lot of them, that we are still slaves in our own country. In the 21st century, we have what it takes to change this country. One of the callers said that uh, Ghana has a lot of mineral resources and natural resources. In the UK and you, Germany, they only build on taxes and technology, as you are aware. But we have everything that a nation should be wealthy of. We have gold, diamond, bauxite, minerals, human resources, all the resources. But all that we lack is just leadership. And continuously, we've been changing bad leaders to bad leaders. And yet we still complain that we need leadership. But the point is that if you need a leader, you need to change those leaders that you've been voting for in order to get the best leader. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how many times you recycle rubber, it's still going to be rubber. It won't change its color or its identity. So if we keep recycling NDC and NPP, we we'll continue to have the, end, the same results that we are looking for. So for us, we think that we need a new dimension, a new crop of leaders. The youth are all out there, waiting, working hard. They've studied. They've come out of school. They are all graduates. They have what it takes. We are living in a, a modern world of technology and computer analysis. These young men have that what it takes. But what do we do? We still allow the old folks who do not even understand leadership now. The current leadership is different from those type of leadership. And these young men are yearning for this position and they are not getting. We, as a, as a leader, you should know when to exit. If you're a father, you don't know when to transfer your wealth to your kids, then you automatically you have failed. If you're a leader, you don't know when to say, it is time for me to step aside and allow the youth to take over, so that when they even make mistakes, I can dare to correct them. 
Do you think Ghanaians are ready to have a new face, a new political party coming to take over? Because we've seen these two big political parties take over Ghana. We have the NDC and the NPP, where Ghanaians believe strongly in them. How are Ghanaians now going to divert their belief into no, it's, APC? It's, it's not about Ghanaian believing in them. It's, a, it's about Ghanaian believing in their corruption level. That when they are in power, people get goodies, not because they are transforming the country. The platforms that we have, NDC and MPP, is not a platform to change Ghana. It's a group of people who have formed a platform to rip Ghana. Categories of people from various sectors. If they were changing the economy, I don't think we should be where we are. Because over the years, they, these two parties have ruled. Look at the issue of food prices today. Look at the issue of fuel, the issue of water, all the fundamentals. Look at the issue of food, that in the 21st century, a Ghanaian cannot get two square meals, not to talk of three square meals a day. We used to talk about three square meals, but now we've limited it to two square meals. Because it's even very difficult to get two square meals for your kids. Well, you will be told that is because of the hardship across the world. Talking about COVID-19, talking about the Russia-Ukraine war, this is what we are being told. No, we, we are using those issues as excuses. What have we learned from Russia and Ukraine war? What have we learned from COVID-19? We are a country that produces crude. We see we spend so much money to buy crude from Russia, a finished product from Russia. We have crude here. We export our crude out there and import finished product. Are we serious? When we have toll, when we could have built many more tolls, so that the crude we extract from here, Ghana, it's easy for us to go and refine it and sell crude at fuel at the cheapest price. Look at the taxes on fuel, the, the, the build-up of taxes on fuel products. Almost 45%. Just the build-up on taxes alone. So if the dollar is 8 cities, build-up is 40%. That is about 44 cities. If you add 4 cities to 8 cities, it's 12 cities. We are selling more fuel more expensive than Togo. When we, Togo used to come to Ghana and buy from us, we used to export fuel to Togo. Today is the reverse. How come every country is buying the same product, same price, but selling cheaper than Ghana? Why is Todd not working? The, the market, the fuel price market, is the same. Why is Todd not working? What is the issue? Because some people are manipulating the system to make money. Some people are benefiting from Tor being adamant, not working at all. People want Tor to be stuck. And you are saying this on record? Of course. Why is Tor not working? Give me a reason. If you were the owner of Ghana, would you not allow Tor to work? Would you go? It's just like a farmer. Let me put it in a very simple way that every ordinary Ghanaian will understand. I'm a farmer. I farm rice, yam, cassava, fresh tomatoes, onions and share butter. All these things put together can cook food for my family. Then I don't cook food. I take all this product and I go and sell it to a restaurant owner who now cooks the food. And my family and I go there to buy food and eat at a very high price. Does it make sense? This is the way we are managing Ghana. We have crude, instead of us to refine it and sell the finished product to our people, consume it, we said no, we now send this crude and send it outside the country, they refine it, and we go back and buy it. Could it not be financial issues that is affecting Tor? What kind of financial issues? The amount of money we spend in importing the finished product. Why don't we use those monies to refurbish Tor and build many more Tors? A good Tor is about $300 million. You mean Ghana doesn't have $300 million? Is that what you think? But we have money to waste on buying long crusades for ministers. Who do not need it. But we are taking a loan now because we are... How much in, have we taken so far? Um, currently, we heard that recently there was a 740 million US dollars that came into the system to help stabilize the city. Firstly, it is not about bringing in money to stabilize the city. It's about using our strategic plans and our common sense to restore the city. One, this is the country where we deal in city. We spend city. 
go to the banks. Almost every businessman and politician have dollar accounts, euro accounts, and pound accounts. Saving their monies in dollars and euro and pounds. Go and see. Go out there. We have forex bureaus more than offices. People trading in dollar, euro, and pounds. Go out there. We have black market lead men and women on the street having more dollars than the Bank of Ghana. Where did they get it from? Bank of Ghana. How can we be a country that trades in cities, that deals in cities and trades in dollars? How will our dollar our city appreciate? There are measures that we need to take. If I was president today, first of all, I'll ban all accounts, dollar accounts in this country. No bank will open a dollar or any forex account for anybody. I'll close it down. Number two, I'll ban all forex bureaus. Nobody should trade in foreign currency. Number three, I will stop everybody from, even government from quoting contracts in dollar and pounds and euros. But I will continue mm -hmm. to stop anybody from buying or selling properties in dollars. Because that is what we do. Everything that we do in this country, people are quoted in dollars. Are we a dollar nation? People say talk is cheap. This is not talk. It is because you have refused to elect the people who can do the job. That is why you feel that talk is cheap. Those who can do the job, you don't believe in them. But Ghanaians believed in that the current government could do it because every person or every government who comes and mounts the podium to look for votes tells Ghanaians what they will do. And at the end of the day, they can't do. That is why the people so that is feel why talk you keep is cheap. Changing. You keep changing until you get the one who can do the job. But if you keep recycling, you're getting the same results. You cannot keep recycling the same leaders and expect the results. But if, if this government in the last election made a lot of numerous promises, right? Jewish ones. Look at the situation today. Look at the cost of fuel. That was what they were using, the price of the dollar. That's what it, Dr. Malvin was talking about. When the fundamentals are weak, the city, the exchange rate will expose you. Today, the fundamentals are worse than before. And the city is performing worse than any other currency in the world. Second where, worst. Is Dr. Baume not in second the, worst. Se second worst in the world. <laughs> That's good. At least we are not last. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sri Lanka beat us to it. Thank you. Mm. So where is Dr. Baume? Who is the one managing it? When the NDC were in power, they were talking. Today they've given them. But the point is that if they are listening government, like I'm saying, there are so many ways we can all help. But there are people. some directives from the Bank of Ghana to desist people from trading in foreign currencies. What are, which directive did the Bank of Ghana give up? If you are aware, just narrate it for me. All I'm telling you is that Bank of Ghana is part of the mess. What did they do? Who, gets, who gives the Forex bureaus and the Gaga people dollars? They don't import the dollars from the U.S. It's the Bank of Ghana. Let's be sincere to ourselves. So if we follow the measures I am telling you, that no bank should trade. Look, I went to China. When I was building one of my houses, I went to buy some few items. I got there, I, the quote of the whole thing was about $60,000, what I wanted to buy. I gave the man $60,000 cash on the table. The man took the money and said, nine, 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 r &B. go, go, r &B. I should take the dollar away and go and bring him R and B. Let me ask you Will this. that happen in this country? Let me ask you this. Where did you get the dollar from? I put it here. Which I'm not supposed to. If things so were working... it means you contributed to it. Exactly. We are all part of it. That's what I'm saying. So if, if you want to put, change if, it, why did you contribute to it? If we put the laws, if we put the right laws, I don't need to take dollar to China. I just need to go to China, order whatever I wanted to order for my house, and then call my bank, send them the invoice, and they will transfer the money. But you contributed to it. I am telling you, that is the point. But because why would you? Have because not, if you are coming to be the banned. next president of Ghana, we have then not you should banned. not have done it. If they are doing wrong, it doesn't mean that you should contribute and to you it. Think that, and you think that I alone, taking that dollar to China, would have solved the problem if we don't bind it? It's allowed. You could start. Because it's allowed. You could start. No, it's allowed. It's not a crime. So I did what, it, what was allowed. What I did was not wrong. But you think it's wrong to do it? I think that if we, it's wrong 
If I'm president, I won't allow anybody to do so that. So why allow, why do it because somebody else is president? That is what I'm telling you, because it's not banned. Get it? If it was banned, I wouldn't do it. It's allowed. Are so that's the answer. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue that's your point. That's the answer. Mm. So all I'm saying is that we are allowing a lot of things to happen. We talk about leadership, but we are not leading. We are not. We are not showing example. Hassan, if you were in power when COVID hit Ghana and when Ukraine-Russia war is still ongoing, what would you have done different? I mean, what do I need from Ukraine? Be honest. Is it food? What do we buy from Ukraine? They say wheat, how many people eat wheat? That's all they complain about. We have farmlands, right? Huge farmlands. We have human resource. We have mineral resource. Yet we are complaining about the war in your house. It's just like you and your husband fighting your house and I'm worried about my house. Saying that I cannot feed because you are fighting with your house and your, your neighbor. That it affected the world. It well, does it affect the world? Which part of us? Germany is closer to, uh, uh, what do you call it? Ukraine and Russia than us. They are not complaining, but we are complaining. What do we buy from them? Tell me. Nobody can tell us what we import from Russia. We should be able, as a country, to produce what we consume, manufacture what we consume, industrialize the things we produce. But what do we do? We have become dependent to the extent that even ordinary water, there are people who import water from abroad. Toothpick, we still import. Biscuit, it's a new trend. This well, biscuit, it looks like we water, import. even the importation of water is a new trend because uh, now there's this uh, bottle water that every rich person's party must, they must serve. Have in his yeah. house. That is the point. What are we doing? What have we learned from Russia and Ukraine? Well, nothing. We still haven't learned anything. We're using it just as an excuse. We should have learned something from that. That as a country, we should be able to produce. Hassan, what would you have done different? I just told you. Uh, produ production and what else? Manufacturing. Manufacturing? Attitudinal change. Mm. Production. You see, this country is so rich to the extent that we are very poor. How? Good. Because we do not add value to the things we have. The gentleman was talking about the whites. Do you know what we are still doing? We are still slaves. You know why? It's not about gold. We have given everything to them till date. All the sectors are managed by whites. The oil sector, the whites have taken it. The mining sector, Chinese and Canadians have taken it. Bauxite, Chinese have taken it. Tell me one sector that belongs to Ghanaian till date. Even the banking sector, Nigerians have taken it. We are in the 21st century slaves. We are in the 21st century, but we are slaves in our own country. Look for the best houses in this country and go there and see those who are living there. Foreigners. Where do we live? The big companies in this country managed by foreigners. Would you pass a law where you will regulate foreigners, you know, taking over? I will, I will pass a law. If you remember in my 2020 campaign, I said that when I'm president, no foreigner can buy property in Ghana. Are you still name. stand by it? I still stand by. How will you do that? Because I'm going to issue three passports. Okay. One passport that Ghanaians will have. It's a full Ghanaian, father Ghanaian, mother Ghanaian. And those people are the first class Ghanaians. And those group of people are the only people who can buy property in this country. If you're not a full Ghanaian, you cannot buy property. Okay. Because, yeah. because, first of all, we're losing everything to the foreigners. The whole country has been taken. Go out and look at the big, big mansions and big, big companies and big, big properties. It's not for Ghanaians. We are joking. In the next 10, 15 years, no Ghanaian will have a huge property unless you are damn rich. Every day, go around and see. All the properties springing up are for foreigners. On that note, let me ask Why you. are we... Why do we think because we are poor, we must sell? I get, I get sad and I get sometimes I get mad. Is this because you know we are selling our properties in foreign currencies? It's because we are giving it for peanuts. We don't have to sell the property. We, we lease the properties. If to. we are giving it for peanuts, then why can't our Ghanaians afford it? Because the peanuts we are giving out, the Ghanaians do not even have it. 
We've made the system so hard. We are not protecting what belongs to us. Hassan, do you... Are you protecting what belongs to us? Let me ask you, do you have properties outside Ghana? No. Not, no. not at all? Not at all. You invest everything in right Ghana. Now. Because this is where I believe. This is my country. I'm a patriotic citizen. I bring all my properties are in this country. Not even my child is studying abroad. Let me tell you. All my kids are studying here. What about health? Even my... Here, I don't go out for any health medication. When I got COVID, I was in Kolobu. From Kolobu, I went to Aima. I did not move out of this country. I stayed in Aima for 21 days under, with oxygen. And the reason why you saw me celebrating my birthday was to give thanks to the Almighty God for giving me another. I did not move out of this country, not because I can't afford it. Let's talk about And that is the reason why I'm building a multi-million dollar hospital in this country, yeah. in Acho. I was going to ask you, let's yes. talk about your, your, your so Kolobu you see, experience. Tell us. My, what, col what my Kolobu think? experience was bad. Mm. Even though I would say all the nurses and doctors were bad there, but my Kolobu experience was bad. My Kolobu experience was said that when I, my wife actually was not well. So I sent my wife to the lab to, for testing. And they found out that my wife has a uh, symptom of SARS. That's COVID. So when they did the lungs, I said, okay, anytime I take my wife anywhere for anything, I try to do. Let's, they should just check both of us, not just my wife, they check myself too. So when they checked you, they said, oh, honorable, look at CV2 have symptoms of God. So why don't you go to the hospital? So I called my doctor who is in Kolobu, who then said, look, my private doctor, who said, oh, let's go to Kolobu. I said, I don't want to go to Kolobu. He said, no, 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 you come to Kolobu. I'm there. I'll take care of you. I insisted I was not going to Kolobu. But when we checked my situation, I was 85 and my wife was 99. What it means that my situation was not... On the, the normal best. level. Yeah. So he advised that I cannot sleep home that night. So I should go quickly to Kolobo. I refused. But he insisted because I didn't want to go to Kolobo. I know the way Kolobo is. But when he insisted, I went to Kolobo. When I got to Kolobo, he got there before me. He's already arranged for a bed. When I got in there, so the, the COVID room was as big as this place with so many people in there and everybody was just lying down. So I came, I realized that, ah, what's happening? They said, no, you two, you have to lie here. They brought in oxygen. They gave me oxygen. I said, oxygen? I said, but my oxygen is okay. No, they said, you have to get certain such. I said, okay, no problem. So they put the oxygen on me. I was there. They left, the doctors left the place by 11.30. The whole place was closed down. So people were there, patients crying because their oxygen had finished. My got finished around 2. Wow. Mm -hmm. 2 a.m. My got finished. And no doctor or nurse will come there until 5.30 in the morning. So we were on our own. Okay, from 11.30 to 5 a.m. Nobody's coming. So all the, I didn't even sleep because I was just hearing everyone cry, shouting. <laughs> There's a good politician who was there. He was only reciting the Quran. I do not want to mention his name, but he was there and he was all the time reciting the Quran and telling me, my president, you won't die. Nothing will happen to you. And he was praying. So he was the only one praying. The rest of the people were crying. And those who could sleep, they were able to sleep. They wake up. Those of them who were very lucky that the um, oxygen was from the main uh, distance, they were lucky. They had two double, one from the cylinder. But the cylinder cannot last you five hours. Did some people die as it happened? Of course. That night? Some people die. They die and they take them out. Did you see them? Uh, of course. They just come and take the person. How many died? I can tell. So three days on, the next day, I called the chief of staff and I said, look, I'm in Kolobu. And the whole place, there's no oxygen. Then the former president, Mahama, called me. I told him I'm also in Kolobu. And he was worried. And he even was the one who even wrote Ayaraga in um, Kolobu with no oxygen. He do, do you know that story? So then they brought oxygen. Mm, we're there. The same thing repeated the next evening, the next night. Two o'clock, oxygen was finished. Lives were lost because of that. Of course. If you're on oxygen. It sustains you. And it's supposed to sustain you to the next morning. And funny enough, nobody comes. Nobody even comes to check on you people. I will make call middle of the night. And there'll be only one nurse at the... They will tell me that she's busy there. I got few. Look, Kolobo is bad. So three days later, I told my wife that... My wife said, look, if you stay in this Kolobo, you will die. So we arranged. I told the doctor, I can't stay in this Kolobo anymore. They should transfer. So we did a transfer. We called Aima, the doctor called Aima International Maritime Hospital, 
and arranged for them to come and pick me. When they came, that was the day they were now taking me to go and check my lungs. Kolubu was now taking me to go. After four days, after three and a half days, Kolubu was now taking me to go and check the status of my lungs. After three and a half days. So the doctors just came and said, from Kolubu and said, uh, from Ayama and said, it's okay, it's okay. We are taking him like that. My saturation was 70, 65 to 70. It dropped from 85. From 85 to 65. Almost going. Yeah, 65, you're almost gone. Yes. When the doctors came, they put me on the oxygen, they, they checked my saturation. They were like, ah, what happened? The level of negligence in that hospital is what is killing the people. Hassan, what would you do differently if you become the president, especially Kolebu, because you've had experience there? Oh my God. What I would do there would be serious. I would refurbish Kolebu. I would change the management of Kolebu. I will even, I will make sure that even nurses and doctors there have to go for extra training. Because when, when you go there, people don't really care because they see death every day. They have to be normal for people to die. Do you think the management of Kolebu currently is bad? For the time I was there, it's bad. For the time I was there, it was very bad. Because people sit down, somebody is crying, dying. I go to Kolebu, even people were lying on the floor with water coming from the ambulance section. Water, water, water. I mean, are we serious as a nation? Government is not doing anything about Kolebu. Did you reach out even to the ICU unit was closed down? Did you reach out to the president to share this with him? I reached out with the chief of staff and I told her. And I'm sure she's conveyed it to the president. And nothing has been done about it? I don't know. Or you haven't Since followed up on it? I haven't followed up on that. But I tell you, Kolobu is a death trap. I pity people who go to Kolobu. Because government need to put eyes on Kolobu. It's serious. Sometimes you just go there and you die. Not because you are ready to die. or you are, you are, the, the negligence level will kill you. Because you go to a hospital for treatment. So if you go there and don't treat you, even if you stay at home, your wife or your family will even take better care of you than going to where they will neglect, you know, they neglect you. But Kolebo is supposed to be one of the biggest hospitals in Africa. And because there's no monitoring and evaluating of Kolebo itself, it's the worst in Africa. Do you think when the government has Ima, neglected Kolebo? Come again. Do you think the government has neglected Kolebo? I think so. I think so. Funny enough, listen to this. Whilst I was there and they were bringing, I made calls and they were bringing, assuming I didn't even have a phone, Ayerga would have been history. Once I was making calls, forcing them to bring oxygen for everybody, they would bring oxygen half cylinder. Sometimes they bring the oxygen cylinders and some of them are empty. And we are paying, for, I don't know who is paying for the oxygen. They deliver oxygen half cylinders. And some of them empty. So the guy comes with, to me, and so I just brought this cylinder. He put it on, he tested, no oxygen. I said, ah, but you just brought this cylinder from your car. And there is no oxygen. And then you put, you regulate it. Oh, your yeah, excellency, yeah, you have to manage it. You brought in a full cylinder of oxygen and it's half. Who checks that? Who controls all that? Who is paying for that? So you see, there is no control and monitoring in all institutions in this country. And the reason why you see that institutions in this country cannot pay workers, government has to borrow. The reason why we have borrowed 341 billion, and yet there is nothing to show. What's the reason for the borrowing? Mismanagement. Because you borrow, if I am the owner of Prime Morn in TV, Joy News, and I want to set up this, and I borrow the money, I go and borrow a million dollars, to refurbish this thing. When I walk in as an owner, I should know that a million dollars has gone in here. Ah, I don't, nobody needs to tell me that a million dollars. From looking at the whole, I will know that a million dollars has gone in here. But you borrow a million dollars, you walk in and you ask yourself, did you people get the loan? That's the question, because nothing has changed. They've taken the loan, they've squandered it, we are, somebody's paying. Are you saying today, the president today, is not monitoring the monies that are coming in? No, we are not monitoring in this country. Who is monitoring who? Who is monitoring who? Tell me. People go to work the time they want. When it rains like it rained today, go to the offices and see some of them are empty. 
Somebody will tell you that it was winning, so I couldn't come to work. So what would you have done? I, I keep on no asking discipline because, in this country. So are you going to sack people because they are late to work? Some people must go to hell for others to go to heaven. Do you understand that? Yes. You need to crack the whip. You need to punish. You need to deal with What is issue. your form of punishment, Hassan? Oh, it's a lot, depending on your crime. Tell us some. Depending on your crime. Some will go to jail. Some will go to jail. Go to jail for what exactly? For crimes. Which crimes part of crime, crime will, will, will depending on, merit depending jail? Depending on the kind of crime you commit. If you kill somebody, you don't need to go to jail. But people go to jail because they've killed people. Yes, but depending on how you kill the person. There are certain people, when they kill, they don't, they don't need to go to jail. You, need, you know where to put them to. Where do they put them? You kill, you get killed. That's your policy? Yes. If you kill, you get killed. You are not useful to the country, the world. Why did you take somebody's life? You go and put in jail, you come back and do the same. You don't have remorse. What will you do to armed robbers? Armed robbers will not, will, not, will not have armed robbers. How will you control that? Because we are going to have a national data system that will capture the data of everybody and make every Ghanaian useful. But that's what the uh, NIA is doing. That is, not, that is not national database. That is national identification card. When I talk about national data system, people get confused the kind of system I'm talking about. Mm. The kind of system the APC and Hassan Ayaga is talking about is a system that is unique. You see, the kind of system that we want to introduce is a data system that captures your biometric, your facial recognition, your every property that you have in this country, where you work, what you do for a living, your telephone number, your address, your children, your house details, whatever you have, your fingerprint. So a crime commits here, and you walk in, and all you need to do is to do forensic. And you have the data of everybody in the system. But you know, as much as you But what we have it. is a national data system. What right. we have as NIA does not capture all the things. I'm but about. using data will not stop crime. It won't it stop will, robbery. It will stop crime. It will reduce robbery. It will, it will it reduce will, it. It will cut down crime. Mm. Because, you see, in Dubai, crime level is 0 0.004. Why data? Why leadership? Leadership. But U.S. has this same data, but, the, but there's high talk, crime. I put, I put two things together. Okay. I said data and leadership. When you have the right leaders put in place, everybody gets to benefit. Why do you think there are armed robbers in the country? Do you think they want to rob? you think armed robbers want to rob? It's because of the situation. Nobody wants to be a thief. Go and ask the armed robbers and they will tell you their story. And you understand that no armed robber wants to be an armed robber. But look at the situation we are in today. The main robbers themselves are the but we are government all, officials. We are all struggling, so I'm why should I'm telling, I said the main armed robbers are the government officials. They steal more than the armed robbers do. They steal the money that you, you should, the armed robber shouldn't be an armed robber. But then we shouldn't condone it. We shouldn't so actually... So send those ones to jail first. That's where we start from. So we should send the... We start from the top. What about the ones on the street? Well, we start from the top, it to cleanse, the, cleanse those from the street. Because when everything is okay at the top, everybody gets to benefit on the street. You start from the street, we've been doing that. But people what you're saying goes, is just going to let people... Goes, what, is, what you're saying is just going to let people go on the street and say, Hassan says that until we start from the top, we should be allowed to roam. That is not what I said. Exactly. Listen to me. No, so let them, let them understand because no, I'm people will misquote that. you. When I'm president, there will be arm robbers mm. in the system. Because everybody will get benefits that will not make you a thief. Let's and I, and I gave you example. Let's talk about some of I gave you example of Dubai. Let's, let's talk about some of your benefits you're going to give to Ghanaians. Jobs creation. That's number one. Unemployment benefit for those who don't have job. Social interventions. Housing. Look at look at the kind of housing we have. You look know, at Sagleme. You know when it comes look to look at it, You know when it's it comes abandoned. To, when, it comes to, when it comes to job creation. Yeah. Every government says they are doing it. Current government says there's YEA that is helping the youth get jobs. You know, where they have the centers, they have YEA job fair. Are you so, talking about current government? Yes. Do you know the kind of work that is, uh, workload that is outside this room, outside this studio? Do you know the kind of work that is outside this studio alone? Tell us. When we move out of the studio, right from where I came from, the roads are filthy and dirty. The gutters are choked. No roots, the trees, there are no trees, a, a whole lot of job. We are talking about job. Canada itself has nothing, we are not working. 
What are you working for? What, what are you doing in this country? Tell me one. And you said there are no jobs. Plenty jobs. So we should put people on the street to sweep. Is that what you're saying? Lot, I'm not talking about it. There's so, so much to do in this country. So how? when you sit down and talk about job creation, we don't have to create a job. The jobs are there. We're not doing it. And how do you intend to create? Uh, to, to we them? have to employ them to do the work and pay them. And the money recycles and everybody gets benefit. When we are talking about jobs, when it rains, the whole country gets flooded. 45 minutes, you won't come to work. By now you would have been sitting somewhere trying to cross the pond to get to your office. You say there's no job. Who's supposed to make sure that all these things are done? When you go to the market and you buy food for plantain, that is supposed to be one city. You buy for 55 cities. Who's supposed to farm and make sure you get it at one city? And you said there's no job. Hmm? We do have farmers, don't we? we oh, you feel it's not enough? It's not enough. That is why food prices are going up. That is why we are importing from, you say we, we, are, we are buying from Ukraine. That is why when COVID came, it exposed us to the nonsense degree. We could not feed three, three states, not states, sorry, not states, three regions. Greater Accra and the so-called Greater Kumasi and Western, we could not feed them for three weeks. Government, we don't have food security. Look at the silos right here in front of you. When you get out of your office, just look opposite. Silos abandoned. Nothing, no stories, nothing. If there's world war disaster, the first people that will die is Ghanaians. Because we import everything. We spend $1.2 billion to import rice. Every month, every day we are importing rice. We have farmland. We spend seven hundred million dollars to import tomatoes. We have farmland. We have we spend seven eight eight hundred and twenty million to import fish. We have the sea right in front of you here, right here. Chicken, chicken feed. Do you know how much we spend? Diapers. Do you know how much we spend? Four hundred and thirty million every month importing diapers and toilet roll, tea roll. You tell me there's no job. And you tell me there's no job. I'm asking you this. If you employ these people, how do you intend to pay? If we employ... What do you mean by how do you intend to pay? I'm, I'm asking you this because the current government is struggling to pay workers. Because the current government is so much corruption in the system. The, the amount of money that it goes to waste, people are paid. Even is in the, the money office, going into the pockets? People are paid, or? even in the office of the finance ministry, without the job being done. How do you account for that? People were paid without con contract certificate, without job being done, and they were paid in the office like the finance ministry. You meant the ghost names? Yes. How is that possible? So with the national data system, it takes off all ghost names in every institution. It makes sure that everybody is captured once. But that's what they said they are doing. Who is doing it? The card. Don't take us backward, madam. No, I'm not taking us backward. Because, because that you, card, I gave you, you, know, but the I card gave you a whole scenario of no, what a national data... But the card is supposed to do the same thing. What card is that? The National Identification what Card. What is it called? National Identification Card. I have mine. Where is it? It's in my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Where my biometric was taken. <laughs> yes, they took pictures. That is not a card. That is just a... Uh, that is not a national data system that I'm talking about. That's not, it's, it, That's this, not what I'm talking about. But what I'm saying is, is that I'm this is about. supposed to be I'm used talking to about. It No, as well. these ones, they are just, they they are wasting your, they've wasted money on those ones. That's part of corruption. That's what I'm telling you. They've wasted research on those ones. What I am talking about is a unique card that every Ghanaian must have. And when you have it, I don't need to look for you. If I'm looking for wrestling, I just enter the system. Wherever wrestling visited today, the system will show. Because wherever you go, you have the card to use to do everything. You go to the hospital, the card is there. You go to the bank, the card is there. You come to a Tema, you're traveling, it shows. Rosalind went out today on this day. Every, so that information feeds all the rest of the institution. It gives to the police, immigration, hospitals, Everything that you do, whatever you do, is a policing kind of Talking about economy. the police, uh, people, kind of people believe that the police are also very, very corrupt and it contributes to corruption in the system where even if they stop you, they take money and they allow you to go. What will you do different, Hassan? I think that um, I'll do a whole lot of re uh, re um, restructuring of the police. Sorry to say, but there are many policemen who are policemen. 
who really shouldn't be there. A policeman is an intelligent officer who is supposed to be more intelligent than you, the citizen, because he's trained to have certain level of intelligence. Not because you are not trained. You are trained to be a journalist. Mm. He is trained in every aspect of intelligence. And he, needs to, he can just sit down and interview you and know that you are telling lies because of the kind of training. But the kind of police we have here, they don't have that training. When they have this kind of training, there will be corruption. So are you going to, uh, with their education level, you're going to increase it? Of course, there will be a standard. There will be a standard. Be a, uh, the, okay. the least of it is uh, 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 first degree. The least of a policeman in Ghana will be a first degree. Because when you meet a policeman in Germany and he talks to you, you know he's an intelligent officer. I am trained by Germans and I know what I'm talking about. If you meet a police officer, he's patient, he has time for you, whatever nonsense you're doing, he'll be listening to you because he's trained to be Could patient. Could it not be just be... the training that we have here for them? It's not just the training. Patriotism adds to it. How patriotic is our policeman and men in uniform? Because first of all, your love for your country comes first. The flag of Ghana is your coat. You are serving the people. And you must learn how to serve the people in so many ways, so many capacities. You must be patient in so many capacities. And it becomes aggressive, there will be an order for you people to be aggressive. Mm. But no policeman is supposed to be aggressive. But the kind of training that we need for our policemen, we do not, they do not have it. It's not their fault. Sometimes it's job for the men. Look at national security. It's been taken over by party boys. The whole guta, whatever they call it, and that's all. You meet the national security. It's so sad sometimes, even white people, when they are integrated by our police or our national security, they laugh at us. Talking about national security, this brings me, uh, you know, uh, to this whole issue of somebody telling me that in the past, when somebody is national security, the person never shows face to tell you that I'm part of yes, national security. you know. You won't know, but, but now... But today, he just tells you I'm national security, and the way he's telling you, he ever approaches you, you find out this man is in normal. But you ask yourself, whether this person... But is it not the best to prevent crime? You see, crime itself, you have to be intelligent to be able to control crime and not commit crime. It's only intelligent people who do not commit crimes. You understand my language? Mm. Only intelligent people who do not commit crimes. Who crime. do not commit crimes. So anybody who commits crimes is not intelligent. <clears throat> if you because there are laws, there are regulations that you only follow and you are intelligent yourself. You know it's a crime. You won't do it. If you should win the 2024 elections and become president in 2025, will you imprison some of the politicians that you feel have been corrupt? No, I no, fe no favor, no fear. Because when we do that, we keep tapping each other's back and scratching each other's back. And the system keeps revolving the same way, corrupt people suffering, difficulties. We are only 30 million Ghanaians with more than 30 different kinds of mineral resources. Assuming we don't even know how to manage. And we decide that we're going to apportion 1 million Ghanaians to every resource. We'll be rich. Very rich to the extent that we'll not be poor. Let's say that we say cocoa. All proceeds from cocoa is going to cater for just 1 million Ghanaians. All proceeds from diamond and bauxite is catering for one million Ghanaians. All proceeds from oil is catering for one million Ghanaians. And, and continue like that. How are we going to be poor? How can we be better? What do you poor? think about free SHS? I already said free SHS was, the policy was good, but the implementation was bad. Because finally, what did we get from free SHS? Was to make sure the students are given the best training in order to become the best students and the best leaders ahead of us. Because if when you don't train your kid to be better than you as a parent, you have failed. Mm -hmm. Anybody, put it on record, that has a, say, if you don't train your children to be better than you, you have failed as, a, as an elder or as a parent. Have we trained our kids, the future leaders, to be better than us as we sit? Today, the curriculum of education has dropped. The standard of education has dropped. Free, giving free things doesn't mean it's good. The mere fact that I've given you something free doesn't mean it's good. Don't forget. Don't mix f free and quality. Right. And that's what we're doing. Look, my kids are in school. They are graduating Friday. They're finishing Friday. I didn't want to say, but I'll mention Daina Chimota. Just to let you know that I've not sent any of my child 
I was there yesterday in the school. Do you think the education quality is the best for your children? This is what, this is what we are giving our children. If I'm looking for the best, I won't send them to Ghana school because I think we're not doing enough to make it the best. So why send them there? Because they should learn from where we are. So tomorrow, they'll face the world. And I'm giving them that because that is what we've set for our standard. I am not the kind of leader who then sets rules and regulations for other kids' children and then take my out. And that is why I want to build Ghana better than where we are. That is why I want to. You will help me. When I become president, everybody will know the difference. I don't want to be president two terms. And I don't want to be, I will never contest when I'm 60. I will never contest for the presidency when I turn 60. I don't want to be an old president. I want to work. So I want to be young to be able to do the job that I want to do. And I don't want to be two-term president. I just want to be one-term president. And what do I do? I put the structures, put the institutions in place that will work. You know, you and need build a country that devoid of corruption, devoid of mismanagement, devoid of mistrust, a whole lot. Now, you know you need a lot of hands to work together to get it better. You can't do it on your own. APC party, do you have enough people to contest parliamentary seats, to win the parliamentary seats, so that if you have your policies, it will be passed by the parliament? Do you think that it is only a good leader, a, a majority in parliament that makes you a good leader? It is the majority in parliament that makes you a corrupt leader. So what if the party That's what I'm telling you, popular? a good leader will get everybody I don't even want to have majority of parliamentarians in parliament. It gives me power to misuse power. But your policies are good. My policies are good. The opposition knows that the policies are good and they'll vote for it. Really? Yes. They won't vote against it. They will they never vote to make because it unpopular. They, when they, no, they're not going to make me unpopular. When you know when you see a good leader who is leading, you will not go against his rules. Because you know he has good. Why do you think they are corrupt? It's because the leaders themselves who are leading are corrupt, so they have to follow. You think everybody who wants the policies of the MPP, while it's an MPP uh, parliamentarian, you think so? Or you think every MP that is an NDC parliamentarian likes what the M NDC was doing when they were in government? No. We have people who are independent president who have ruled countries and have done much better. They never had a parliamentarian. And they were ruling, and they were buying policies were ongoing. So don't worry about that aspect. We should be worried about the policies and the programs I'm going to build for Mother Ghana. Mm. Now, we're looking on the screen right now, we have, the media. we have a video of your party, your 50th birthday party. Now, I'm talking about this being the biggest birthday party uh, that has ever happened in Accra this year. Let me put it like that. And we've seen a lot of politicians there. We are calling most of them corrupt, and most of them are your friends. What have you done to change what they are doing in order for us to have a better Ghana? Because I've been talking to most of them, and they understand me very well. They always say, I, if you become president, all of us will be happy. But see, people, are, say, people are saying, show me your friend and I'll show you my character. Yeah, you are calling if, them corrupt. If, are you not corrupt yourself? No, 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 no. Well, I've never ruled in this country. How can I be corrupt? <laughs> I've Maybe never been, I've never been a, listen to me, I've never been an <laughs> assemblyman, a minister, a deputy minister. What I do is my own wealth. I create wealth. I create jobs. How did you create your wealth? I was trained by Germans. I grew up in Germany as a young man. I left this country at age 16. I bought my first car one year after I went to Germany. 16. Wow. Yes, I started working in Germany at age 16 and schooled at the same time. I made my first $1 million at age 20. How did you make it? Business and work. I had companies, I had restaurants. When I got to Germany, I made good use of the opportunities available. And here, that is the opportunities that you don't have. And that's what I'm talking about. You give them the opportunity and they build their future. That is what they are looking for. They are only looking for the opportunity. Let's give them that environment, that enabling environment for them to strive. That is what we don't give them. They go to school, finish with certificate, they become useless. That's why in 2012, I said that we're producing, uh, what do you call them, avoidable graduates. You know why? Wherever they go, they are avoiding them. 
So I use the term avoidable graduates. These are graduates who are supposed to be creative and innovative in their field. But when we train them and we, they come out, they go looking for jobs instead of creating jobs themselves. That's your house, right? Yes, that's my house. They don't create jobs. So this house, when did you build this house, Hassan? <laughs> I built it uh, in 20, is it 2016, 2017. Started building in 2017. And you created your own wealth, you yes. said. Now, I heard that you said you want to manage ECG. You want to buy ECG. Yes. And how will you manage ECG to change See, it? See, if I have to tell you, uh, I'll just, I can tell you a little of how I want to manage ECG. When I buy ECG, I'm not going to give you people meters anymore. What mm -hmm. are you going to do? You see the digitalization of the homes that we do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, every structure will have a number. I'm not going to go by meter. Every shop will have a number. And I'll just give you a flat rate. I don't mind. We have over more than 30 million houses in this country. More than 20 million offices in this country. Barbering salutes and all that. More than 2 million or 3 million of those things. Talk about markets, offices, market structures, you know, those offices. There are more than 5 million, 10 million. Assuming I decide that every house, every house, household, your flat rate is 100 Ghana a month, multiply by 30 million. How much is that? Then I say every shop, your flat rate is 25 Ghana. I'm not charging. 25. Every office. Consume whatever you want to consume the powder one. Your flat rate is 100 Ghana. Start calculating and see how much I'm going to get. I don't need you to give you a meter and you do all that. And see how I will pay ECG twice and still have money. And I have more to tell them, but I don't tell them because if I tell them, they will sell it to me. They will sell it to you. <laughs> so we are hoping but, uh, on buying. When they sell it to me, Ghanaians will get cheaper weights. Much, much. I will cut it down by 1,000%. But what has been the response so far from ECG? Are they willing to sell it to you? Ah, they're still I'm talking. we we'll see. We'll cut it down. I'll sell it down to buy 100%. It? Do you have the money to buy it? Don't worry. Let them sell it, and you see whether I have the money to buy it or not. <laughs> they should put it on sale. They say they're giving it to a young guy. Come and negotiate with us. And you will see, all of you, your electricity will go down. Wow. I think by 1,000%, not 100, by 1,000. I How think on this here? note, we need to try you by giving you ECG. <laughs> and let's see. So, so we see. see if how Ayariga is able to do it, then it means that 2024, yes. you are definitely going to be the force to reckon. If I get ECG today, Next week, I'll announce the rates will go down. We'll take off all the meters. Every meter in every house. You don't need a meter. Can we try Ariariga for this alone? Yes. I'll say that. Let's try. Let's give you a try. Just you try it and see. Let's, let's give you a try. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. Hopefully, thank you, time dear. is not on our side. Yeah. But for your ultra modern hospital, when is it going to be ready? They, they put a ban on it because of uh, some issue of some part of the... Somebody's claiming some two plots in there and took the matter to court. And he has some... I tried to pay him off and he's trying to, I don't know what is what's wrong with that gentleman. I just spoke to him. Let me, whatever it is, I'll give you money for your two plots or I'll give you four plots somewhere. And he's still adamant. So that's where we're On that note, finish. we'll get it done. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Thank we you. are very, very grateful. and wish you nothing but the best in 2024. Thank you for watching the show today as well. My name is Rosalind Feli. We'll come back again tomorrow from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I've been doing this with KMJ and a big thank you to our production team. We love you. Hassan, thank you once again. Thank for you. Being here. We are great. Thank you for having Enjoy me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.